Hello everybody, Max here with A1 Website Pro, and today we're going to be talking about uh, data encryption in PHP. And I have my uh, friend Angie S. She sent me a message here a few days ago, said that she liked the method, but she wanted me to do the follow-up on how to insert it into her uh, MySQL and retrieve from MySQL database in PHP. So that's what we're going to be concentrating on today, on how to put uh, the information into your database, and then later on how to retrieve it from the database. So we're going to do a rundown, uh, quick and easy method, method uh, to get you started, and then you can build upon that later. You can put it in tables, you can do it in rows and columns. If you're using uh, Bootstrap, you know, calling that information. You can also use Ajax to uh, insert the information into a database and retrieve it. So without further ado, let's get started so you guys can get, uh, have more secure websites. Right in here. So in the last video, I was showing you how I was putting my name in here and hitting submit. And you could see the encrypted string and the decrypted string. And so this gave you an illustration on how to, you know, encrypt things. The next thing you need to do is prepare the database to store this encryption, okay? So this encryption can quit, get quite lengthy, especially if this is a text box instead of a text area. It may even have pictures in it, links, um, different tags. So what we want to do is make sure that we can store however long the encrypted string is. So what we'll do is go to our PHP My Admin, and we'll go to New Database. We're going to create a new database, and we'll call it uh, uh, Users, okay? And we'll change that to the UTF-8. Click Create. And the table we will call, we'll call People, okay? And the number of columns we'll have in is four. We'll click Go. The first one is going to be the ID number. This is going to be set to an integer, a length of values of 11. Of course, we're not going to encrypt the IDs, okay? We need to, <clears throat> to leave those as is. We want to auto-increment this, so we'll let PHP do its thing here so we don't have to do it in code, and click Go. So now we have our unique IDs that will come in. The next thing we'll put in is name. And for that, we're going to use a uh, var chart. Now, that uh, shouldn't be very long. You know, we could go 255 here. But in order to be safe, in case you get a person with a very, very long name, you can always use text and just leave that box empty. In fact, when I'm encrypting things and storing them into um, a PHP My Admin or a MySQL database, a lot of times I'll use text or I will use um, the uh, binary var binary or binary okay but uh, just for all intents and purposes we will keep it text okay well the next thing let's go let's collect their email all right and once again we're going to set that to text and we can leave this blank now if we were setting this to a uh, var char var char something uh, like that we would have to give this a length of 255 but since we set it to text we don't have to give it a length all right uh, finally, we will give, give, you know, a reg date, and this will be a timestamp, and we're not going to encode the timestamp, we're just going to leave it whatever it is, okay? So we have ID, name, email, and reg date. So let's go ahead and click save, and so here are our fields, let's go ahead and look at the structure. Okay, so we got a table called people, and in this table we have ID, name, email, and reg date. All right, now let's go back to our particular uh, uh, application here. And you will see, if I bring up Dreamweaver, I created a header and a footer for this particular uh, lesson. We're going to have to create something else, though. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be called a config file. What a config file does is it's going to connect us to that database. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, right-click over the top, hit New File, type in config.php. Now you can name this whatever you want. Some people name it db.php, you know, key.php. But here we have to put in our connection information to our database, all right? All this is going to disappear that Dreamweaver puts in there automatically. And we're going to go to A1 Website Pro where it says make a config file and see this little thing right here, this little code? This is gonna help you out. We could just grab this code copy, 
And this is going to give us the information we need. We're going to manipulate it a little bit. Now, don't forget our PHP tags, okay? And let's go in here. Paste in. Okay, so MySQL Connect is localhost. Database username is root. The database password, I don't have one. And the uh, database name, what do we call it? If we go back, I believe we called it users. Yep, users right there. So we're going to go in here and type in users. All right. Now all we have to do is we'll echo out something here. Connection successful. C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-O-N S-U-C-C-E-S-S-S-V Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let me hit save and we will go to the encryption and we'll load up the config.php file and we see that our connection is indeed successful and so we can take this particular thing out. We're not going to need that. All right. Okie dokie. Save. Now, here we go. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and refresh this, make sure. See, we already we already know that we're connecting successfully. Now we want to take this encrypted string. Uh, we want to modify the form a little bit here, but we're going to want to put this encrypted string into the database. So let's go ahead and go to our index.php file that we're working in, and <clears throat> right here we're at, we're asking for the name. So, so let's go say name. Uh, type name type name and then type is text name is name all right and and just to shorten things up a little bit you know if you guys need a little bit more clarification on how to use you know form items and stuff like that i have a lot of tutorials on this well, let me copy paste paste okay this next one is type email because we want their email so label for email and put type text. We're going to change that to email and the name is going to be email. Okay. Now let's go ahead. We'll save that. And if we go back to the, the, uh, the front end here, you can see now we have a place to put our name and then a place to put our email. Okay, and that's what we want. Now, the next thing we need to do is after the email is submitted, uh, the name and the email is submitted, we need to do something with it. Now, here's our encryption data, you know, where we encrypt the string. And uh, this particular, let's see, uh, we need to change this from foo to name. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's just change these variables to make them look good okay and uh, I'm gonna get rid of this decryption because right now we what we want to do is we just want to store it in the database right we, we don't care about decrypting we're just collecting information so here we go we have name now right here um, we want to copy this again because we got the email copy paste paste I want to type in email, just like so. Copy. We'll put that there. Put that there. This is where the encryption takes place. Email. Okay, and then, you know what? Just to make sure that it's working, we'll say echo. Echo. And then let's see. Uh, we'll just put a P tag here. And type in name, colon. And then... Uh, Right after that, we will concatenate and say uh, dollar sign name. All right. Then we'll close the P tag there. And let's go ahead and do that with the email too. Okay. Email. Email. Just like that. All right. Now I'm going to save it. Now what this is doing is seeing, uh, you know, if name is set, then it's going to encrypt it. And it's going to show us the encrypted name, the encrypted email. All right. So we're not going to see the actual name and email. But we're going to see the encrypted. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. Type name, Maximus McCullough, email, Maximus McCullough29 at Gmail. And here we have an enc my encrypted name and my encrypted email address. And this is what we want to store 
in the database, in the MySQL database. All right. So <clears throat> if you go to A1 Website Pro under PHP lessons, okay, this, these, I have all these snippets here because I use them all the time too because, you know, it speeds me up. I, all I have to do is copy, uh, you know, what I wrote down before instead of typing it all out. Now you could use snippets, you could store them in Dreamweaver or whatever. I just got in the habit of storing all my snippets on the website just so that I could go there and grab them real quick and use them. Okay, so let's go ahead and where we want to insert into a database, you know, using PHP MySQL E. And all you have to do is uh, scroll down here to this little code. We'll grab this little code. Copy. I'll show you how to use it here because it's real easy. And go ahead and paste it right in there. And uh, now in this particular uh, database, if we look at the database, let's look at it pretty carefully here. We have uh, the name and email. The ID and the reg date are going to auto-generate. So we're basically, we're just worried about the name and email. Okay. So the first row is name. The second row would be email, just like so. And we don't need this third row, so we're just going to get rid of it up to the comma. Right here, we'll type in name because we're getting the encrypted name right here. We'll type in email there because we're getting the encrypted email right here. And then, of course, that third variable we don't need. And uh, maybe we can echo something like, oh, let's see. Div class equals alert. Alert success and this successful alert will say um, you entered successfully s-u-c-c-e all right we'll close that div out just like so all right save it now we can see that there's nothing in the database Let's go ahead and refresh this page. We'll put in my name and my email. Hit submit. Okay. Undefined variable, con. You know why that is? It's because I was foolish and I did not bring in the uh, con in the header. So I'm going to go in the header. And you could do pretty much do this anywhere, but uh, I like to do it in the header. And if you want to, you could put it right at the top. Include, oh, underscore once, oops, it's going to make me type everything else. <laughs> I'm not used to having to do all the work. Okay, config.php, and put it around like so. All right. Now we'll save. Now we're including the config file that we created earlier in the header.php. So then that now it should work because now we have a key to get into the database to manipulate it. All right. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. We'll go ahead and retype my name, put my email in there and hit submit. And there you go. You entered successfully as the alert goes. And we will go here and click on people. And we see that we get nothing. Why? Because uh, the uh, name of the database is users, but the name of the table is people. So what I have to do is I have to go back here to the index source code, insert into people, okay, the name and the email. Let me hit save. Go back here. Refresh once again. Put my name. Put my email, hit submit. You entered successfully once again. Let's see if that's a false alarm. And there we go. Now, there is my name and email in this database along with the name. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and put in another name. Let me put Angie S and then Angie at a1websitepro.com. All right. And then we'll hit submit. And we'll look at our database once again. 
And voila, now we have two entries. You see the entries there start to come. Now what we want to do is we want to recall that information from the database and display it on our web page. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll go to our Dreamweaver and this index.php. We're just going to go File, we'll sit, Save As, and we'll say Display.php. All right. And this is loaded up. Now we know we need our key, all right? We don't need to encrypt here, but we need to decrypt. We're just gonna leave it just like that, all right? <clears throat> now we want, what we wanna do is we wanna go to the database, pull that information out and display it on the page. So since we're not putting anything in the database, we could actually take this stuff out. We don't need the form, okay? And just shorten it up here a little bit. Okay. Now <clears throat> we want to connect to the database and we're doing that in our header.php because that's including the config <coughs> to our handy dandy Able Website Pro. And we'll go back. And this time we want to retrieve data from MySQL with PHP. Okay. So we'll come down here. See this little code right here? We'll pop it out. I'm not grabbing the whole thing. I'm just going to grab up to right here, because right? this is where we're going to query the table and we're going to display the results. The reason why I didn't need that top part is because it's already included up there. Okay, so select all from what? What table do we want to select from? Okay, so if we go here, select all from people, okay? Select all from people. Now we have different names. We have uh, one that's called a name, right? So we're gonna just set set this variable, row name, set the name. And then the next one we have is email, right? Now we could use ID, but we don't need to. So I'm just gonna skip over that. And the next one is reg date. REG underscore date, just like so. REG underscore date. Now let's display this information um, by just, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll echo it out. Echo, and then we'll have a P tag maybe. And then on the other side of the P tag, we'll concatenate the name. Okay. And maybe we'll close out the P tag just like that. Maybe we'll put them all on different lines. Okay. They, it doesn't matter how you want to display them. You could do them in tables, rows, or whatnot. So we'll do the name, copy, email, copy, and reg date. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be code all over the screen. And uh, the name of this was display. So let's go ahead and load up display.php in our browser. Display.php, just like so. Now we get a bunch of uh, code out here that you know that we can't understand. So how do we how do we deal with this? Well, we got to use our decrypt this function, right? So decrypt this, copy, and we're going to put it in front of our row. And right after this, we got to put comma, then our variable of key. Make sure you close out that parenthesis. Okay. And we're going to do it on the email too. Now remember, we don't have to do it on the reg date because it's not encrypted. But this particular one is encrypted. And so we're going to put it in there like so. Okay. Let me hit save. Now let's go back here and refresh. And voila, we have decryption. Okay. And that's how you store stuff in the database, like it's, you know, so it's encrypted. And then whenever you pull it back out, you know, you can decrypt it. All right. So that's how you do it. It's pretty simple. You know, once you have, uh, you know, this method down, you know, you, first you set your key, then you have your encrypt function, then you have your decrypt function, and then you can uh, insert it, you know, like this. Or display it like this, you know, 
You can insert it with a form and display it with a decryption. Now, maybe in the next lesson, you know, I'll show you different ways of displaying the data. And then maybe, uh, you know, you want to uh, save numbers and then do some mathematical calculations with them. You could do that. You know, it's uh, just all with the encryption and decryption. And if you look at that database, you could see you'd never stored anybody's name. So if anybody ever stole this database, they would not get their name and email without that key. So they could do all the stealing they want. You're still protected. Um, this really uh, helps with the privacy of people, you know, and I know a lot of other uh, big stores and exchanges wish they had something like this whenever their database was compromised. And uh, so it's an important thing to do, and it's not that hard. You just got to do a little bit of thinking, and uh, voila, you'll have it. You'll have a good protected site. This is Max with A1 Website Pro. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.